So that's this example here. Uh, so this is a special case where we are given this curve directly. So you have this void ratio E in sigma prime log scale curve. And I'm going to use this to estimate uh, consolidation settlement. So this is a kind of a special case. And in more common scenarios, you are given these two moduli CC and the CS, and that's what you use to calculate um, void ratio change. But uh, let's look at this case first, then I'll talk about the other cases. So for the first one, we have clay. And then you're adding load on top. So that's basically a delta sigma prime. So you're adding six, 60 kilonewton per meter square surcharge on top, and that will induce consolidation. And we have initial void ratio, and then the saturated unit weight. So that's what's given. As I mentioned, in this example, we're going to use directly this uh, E-log sigma prime curve to calculate uh, consolidation. Okay. So let's look at this curve here. So for this calculation here, I'm going to focus on this mid clay layer here. Okay. So I'm going to focus on this response, this sample at middle of this clay layer and use that as a representative of this entire layer. So I'm going to focus on this void ratio change on this sample. So this is sample. So for this small sample here, so for this representative sample, initial stress, the initial stress, this is a saturated clay layer. So we have four times gamma saturated minus gamma water. Okay. So that's the initial, um, so let me be uh, more specific, initial effective stress. Okay. So the initial effective stress at the middle of the clay layer is four. So that's the distance from that point to the surface. So that's how I get that four. So four times buoyant unit weight. So this is a buoyant unit weight. So this gives us four times 18 minus 9.81, okay. 32.76, So that's initial effective stress at the middle of the clay layer. So that's where that representative sample was taken. In the initial void ratio, okay. so that's this 32.67. So that's sigma naught prime. Okay. And then the corresponding void ratio, this is also given to you. So this is E naught. So we know the void ratio, the initial void ratio is 1.1. And change in effective stress. So this change in effective stress is the surcharge you add on top. So that surcharge causes consolidation. So that is 60 kilonewton meter square. Okay. So that's the surcharge, 60. And then the final effective stress. So final effective stress, initial plus the surcharge, 92.76. So that is the final effective stress after you put the surcharge on top. So 60 plus that initial value, 32.76. So that's the final effective stress. And from this curve, that value is right here. So that's that final effective stress value. And then from this E log sigma prime curve, you can find the corresponding final void ratio. Okay. 
So the final void ratio is 1.045. So EF. Okay. So this is something you get from that E log sigma prime curve you obtained from your 1D consolidation test. Okay. And you can read that from the curve is 1.045. And once you have this final void ratio, then the change in void ratio. So the change in void ratio is basically final minus initial. So EF minus E naught. Okay. And this is uh, 055. So the change in void ratio is 0 0.005 here. And so again, it, it depends on how you treat the settlement. So here we treat settlement, that vertical settlement positive when it's basically decreasing the thicknesses, we're reducing the thickness, so we're consolidating the soil sample. So that's why I use positive here. So then the SC value is H over one plus E naught delta E. And this is, that's eight over one plus 1.1 1 .1 times 0.055. Okay. So H is the initial height of the layer thickness of that clay layer. And 1.1 1 .1 is uh, the initial void ratio. Okay. So this gives us 0.21 meter. So this is a special, I would say, a special case in consolidation calculation, meaning you are directly given this E log P prime curve. Okay. So you're given this entire curve from your 1D consolidation lab test and then you find a uh, void ratio change from the curve to calculate S. So you're using this, again, you're using this equation here, but your delta E is essentially read from that curve. Okay, so this is a special case. And for more, more common scenarios, actually, you are not given this curve, you are given two indices, this compression and recompression indices. Uh, so you're given actually the slope of these two portions, the flat and the steeper portion of this curve, and then you calculate the void ratio change using this information. Okay. So again, you're not given this curve, but you're given the slopes of these uh, curves and that's changing point, that pre-consolidation pressure. Okay. And for that, uh, I have listed a number of scenarios how you use this information to calculate uh, void ratio change and then to estimate settlement. Okay. And I'll leave those cases to next lectures.